Hi everyone again um, welcome to this uh, lecture today we will be continuing the discussion uh, on uh, tickle TK that we started uh, last time. Um, so uh, this is I think like the third lecture on the tickle TK um, let us see uh, what we did last time. Um, so we started like I mean the, the first lecture with the basic understanding of the tickle how the tickle works and um, how tickle was invented and all those things. Uh, then last week we started in earnest uh, understanding the tickle programming language. Uh, we started with uh, the tickle commands and how they are interpreted. Um, as um, I said, tickle commands essentially like I mean so there is uh, no command um, uh, syntax or actually like no grammar for tickle. Um, essentially commands are nothing but words separated by white space um, and then the way that uh, the interpreter uh, works is um, there is a um, built in interpreter which divides the entire command into various uh, words and then it sends those words to a parser the parser actually then uh, finds out what is the, the real function. And that can recursively call the interpreter for further elaboration, but it's just a very very simple um, thing basically. Again, I want to um, emphasize this because the, in the very first lecture we saw that actually um, we want a very lightweight uh, scripting language, unlike uh, C, C++, which are like much more um, heavy um, languages, um, and Essentially, like again, once again, I want to emphasize that tickle is used to for run applications and extending applications, run multiple applications, uh, and also like extending applications. Today, it has been a very prevalent use of uh, tickle uh, across various tools that you will, that you will use later on in your career. Um, there is not a single tool today that uh, does not use uh, tickle. Um, also wanted to emphasize that tickle is a um, 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 platform independent uh, scripting language uh, so unlike uh, any kind of shell or anything you take and then they are dependent on the particular platform that you use and there will be like small quirks associated with those platforms. Um, there is a shell associated with tickle that is the wish that we saw in the very first lecture uh, I didn't I forgot to mention about that in the last one. So just to remember that the wishes was developed specifically for uh, tickle and um, again the tickle was developed uh, at uh, UC Berkeley by um, Osterhout who also wrote that book and um, if you look at the other book that I mentioned uh, which is uh, the Brent Welch, Brent is a student of uh, Osterhout and um, essentially uh, he is probably one of the first uh, persons um, um, who actually um, uh, road programs in tickle. So uh, it, those, those two books are very good read. So um, I would encourage you to uh, look at those two books as uh, main references. So coming back to tickle commands, uh, the tickle command is, uh, as I mentioned, it's word separated by white space. The first word is a function, and all the others are arguments. Uh, only functions apply meanings to the argument as I said tickle itself does not have any kind of grammar so the function really um, applies the meaning to the arguments it is uh, always it is single pass tokenizing and uh, substitution um, and then there are two main concepts that we introduced uh, in the last lecture one is what is called the variable uh, interpolation or variable substitution. Uh, variable substitution is essentially use, it's using these the dollar sign. So um, whenever it sees the dollar, it substitutes that variable with the actual value. And then you also have the second one, which is the second important concept, which is the command substitution. So I'm just saying in substitution. So the command substitution is um, use using these two um, factors whenever we see that anything enclosed in a square brackets essentially like I mean that is um, the first one again is interpreted as command and that is executed first 
and then the result is actually fed into the remainder of the expression. Then uh, there are two ways of uh, preventing the word breaks one is with the double quotes so whatever is enclosed within double quotes it is treated as one word um, and then we also have this um, the, the curly braces essentially like that also prevents uh, interpolation so this also prevents the word breaks so the difference between these two is that the quotes will still cause the the interpolation of the variable or the command substitution. So the command substitution and the word substitution are possible within the quotes. Whereas if you put it in the curly braces, then it prevents all the interpolation as well. Then the last one is we saw the escape characters. Essentially, escape characters are for special characters. So if you escape them as even as a dollar. Then that will not cause any interpolation. It will be printed as this. Um, again, I want to emphasize that tickle is a scripting language. Usually, it takes strings as the input and strings as the output. So it doesn't attach any kind of um, um, type to the data. The way that type is provided is through those functions. That is uh, that we will talk about more and more. Um, so after this we also looked at uh, the tickle expressions um, as to what are the rules for the expressions um, one rule that uh, comes to my mind is um, this um, floating point versus fixed point. So whenever we write um, um, the fixed point expressions the tickle also like considers the result as a fixed point whereas the moment we start a floating point it does not matter after that how many fixed points that we use the tickle expression will return a floating point number. So this this is something that you need to use it with caution so I will I will advise you and then I will leave it at that um, and then we also uh, started looking at the tickle lists essentially. Um, So lists are essentially like I mean um, they are collection of uh, objects essentially and then um, we assign um, we can actually group those um, um, the um, the elements uh, in a list um, and separated by um, um, a white space essentially like the, the list is simply a string with list elements separated by white space um, we can use braces or quotes to group the words with white space into a single list element um, which is very similar to what we saw here essentially so we can use the curly braces to group elements and treat them as a single element inside a list. And then there are many many commands associated with a list um, a, a list command essentially like list will create a list and then there are several of the um, um, other commands um, that we will see in this uh, section uh, in today's section that uh, will actually work with the list and manipulate and uh, process the list. Um, so some of the commands uh, we also saw in the last um, um, uh, ones are this L index. The L index um, essentially, like I mean, with an argument list and a number i, will return the ith element of from the list, and the uh, L length. List returns the number of elements inside that list. We also have L range, I think uh, you can guess what it is, and L append. There are L insert, which inserts exactly at where you want to insert. L append will actually insert at the end. Um, 
and then L sort is an another um, way to actually sort a list and this can take uh, multiple um, um, uh, options essentially that we can give like various switches called ASCII or um, integer or real and then you can specify whether you want an increasing sort or decreasing sort things like that um, and then there are also like to concatenate uh, a list essentially like we have um, um, concatenate multiple lists we have concat command we also have a join command for joining a new string uh, into a list and then split string is the other one which is essentially the split command is basically to split on a particular string uh, the list into two two separate uh, lists. So um, I think like I mean these are the things that we uh, talked about um, um, we will we will also like go through some some examples um, later on. Um, but um, I also wanted to actually talk about um, some of today's things. One is the command send lists essentially. Um, so lists parse cleanly as commands. Each element becomes one word. But in order to create commands safely, uh, we use the list command itself. That is the one that we saw here. Just list. The reason for that is here there is a uh, one command uh, the command itself is set x in its value dollar in its value so this is essentially like I mean what it is means is basically the unit value is read when the button is invoked now this command is fine we can also do um, this unit value in quotes so that it actually like does the command substitution but here the issue is if this init value is uh, two different um, um, words separated by a blank space in between then it fails because now this variable that it expects is actually a list essentially or set x New York is not possible this command fails because this is the, the, the x that it is setting this value to and the init value is new r which it cannot set it so essentially like the command will say here whereas if you say okay now um, set x and in quotes we give the in init value uh, or sorry in curly braces we give the init value now what happens is um, if you have um, init value as one of the curly braces then it fails because um, again like I mean um, this is a, this is not a valid command because there is no escape character nothing for the, the, the curly braces. So how do we specify the same thing where we want the command as set x to the init value which is safe so that it covers any condition possible. So what we do is essentially like now we say command here we specify the list and then we say the x as init value instead of the quotes or inside that the curly braces. So here it will work because if the init value is um, this curly brace then it basically it automatically escapes that uh, curly brace and essentially it gives you as set x um, uh, as uh, escaped curly brace which will work. So essentially uh, using the list command is a very safe uh, way to actually uh, specify list files uh, specify list. So we, we will see this uh, more and more uh, again uh, one thing to note is tickle it is prone to a lot of errors and um, I mean you can make a lot of mistakes and you can make a lot of errors very easily um, and then quickly 
you can actually get um, bogged down into your own errors and trying to debug those errors. So some of the safe practices when we say uh, when I um, show it to you, I think um, you should actually heed and pretty much uh, try to adopt these kind of um, safer practices, which will enable you to succeed in uh, coding in Tickle. So now we come to uh, the strings essentially. Um, so we we know that um, um, the string commands essentially are um, again uh, there are many many uh, commands for uh, string manipulation. Um, Strings again, um, again the strings are group of uh, characters that we talked about um, in the previous uh, lectures, um, and then string manipulation is one of the main thing basically. Um, and string is the basic data item in Tickle, um, and as I also mentioned that the commands themselves um, are essentially like I mean the whole commands are parsed as strings. Uh, which is essentially character separated by word space and um, essentially like I mean using that we can um, do like a lot, lot of things um, and then the key thing to also understand is um, using strings we can do pattern matching which I will talk about and uh, pattern matching is again one of the key elements um, in, in the tickle. And it is slightly different than what we saw in uh, Perl, uh, for that matter. And um, the two main concepts are: one is exact matching and globe matching. Uh, this is GLOB globbing. So, globe matching and exact matching. We will see, like, I mean, what is this glob style, and then uh, what that means. Um, so the string manipulation command, uh, so regex. So this is for the regular expression. It's also a format. Uh, There's the split string, reg sub, scan, and the join. These are all the string manipulation commands. There is the basic command, which is also a string, and the way to use is string. Followed by operation and then string value and then um, any other arguments. So, string command similar to the list command that we talked about is um, the main um, command essentially, like that is listed here. This is the string command. And then the string has the sub command, which is this operation that can be compare, first, last, index, length, match, range, to upper, to lower, trim, trim left, and trim right. So we will see like some of the examples of how to use these commands. Um, one quick note is all the indexes um, within the string. Start with zero. So if I say um, Sear Academy, so this is string value zero, the index zero, and I is also you can say end. Okay. So it starts with zero. And then end means the last character in this example. And notice that actually it's one word. So if I split it here, this is a string, this is another string. And for this string, this is zero and this is the end. For this string, this is zero and this is the end. So it actually goes like zero, one, two, three. 
if you make it continuous then it's actually more 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the value index 10 is also same as index n. Okay. So now let us look at these commands. The string compare takes two more arguments which is string 1 and string 2 and that returns 0 if they are equal minus 1 if string 1 starts before string 2 or it returns 1. So just this compare has three return values. And then the first also takes two uh, string two arguments string one and the string two and then that returns the index in string two of the first occurrence of string one. If the string one does not exist as a part in string two then it returns negative one to indicate that the string one is not found. And then the same is last essentially, which is the last occurrence of particular um, uh, string one. Some of the other ones that are interesting are range. Range um, gives basically it also takes two additional, actually like three additional um, arguments. One of the string and then two numbers and then it returns the characters between those two numbers as the range and then uh, the string match actually that takes a pattern and uh, also after that it is a string so it takes two more arguments a pattern and a string and then it returns one if the string matches the pattern otherwise it returns 0 and here the string match command this one uses the globe style matching that means that it, you can use special characters and wildcards uh, we will actually see that uh, in the further example then we all we can also like trim the the string essentially um, which is uh, it trims from both ends of the string uh, and then the character uh, usually like I mean it also has an optional characters that um, it can uh, take and that is the characters um, it, it will trim and um, optionally I mean uh, for as a default the character is always uh, white space which is it trims the white space from both, both ends if there are any and then the trim left and trim right does the same thing on the either side. The two upper and two lower is essentially to uppercase uh, the string or the lower case the string. So now let us look at uh, the key thing that I mentioned in the uh, previous one which is the globbing. So the globbing and regular expression essentially the globbing is a simple pattern language. So I want to emphasize these four things which you want to use in globbing style which um, essentially like I mean which, um, which, which you can really use those two those four styles. First one is the star that means any sequence of characters so if you want to match say um, uh, Sierra A star that matches Sierra Academy in any kind of spelling or just Sierra that is fine. So, anything that uh, the star will specify that basically. Then we have the question mark, question mark matches one character at a time. So, how many ever question mark you give it matches that many characters. Um, for example, if you say S question mark R academy 
then it won't match Sierra Academy because um, you have two characters in between and um, it only matches one of them so that will match SIR Academy, SAR Academy, SUR Academy whichever way that you can spell it will match. Now we can also have square brackets and some characters in the middle. Um, this can be characters or a range uh, of characters and here it matches those specific characters um, and it matches one one character in that one in that range again you can have like the multiple of these essentially to match more than one character but every uh, square bracket will match one character out of that set the set that is specified here. And then we can also like um, um, backslash with the C is matches C even if it is um, all these special characters. So if you want to exactly match a star, you basically escape it as star. So that matches exactly that that character. So I wanted to make a distinction between the globe style um, pattern matching and the globe command that uh, we saw in the earlier ones. Oh, before that, here are some of the examples. So, um, star dot exe that is specifically this globe style, which is this one. And then uh, we can also have a through e star. That is, first character it matches a b c d e. After that, it can have any number of characters, and with uh, the extension text. Here we can escape the question mark which is basically so it needs to have like question mark then any number dot back is what is matched here. So it will be a good exercise if you can actually um, identify these kind of things um, later on in, in, uh, in the particular program. Now the globe command is also like another common command please do not confuse it with the globing style matching. The globe command applies a globe pattern to file name essentially the globe actually returns the unix file names um, in that particular directory. So here for each f globe star dot exe but uh, um, dollar f is a program basically it goes to your current directory and looks for any of the exes and then it prints out this uh, message for those programs. So the globe command is returns the unique files essentially whereas globing cell matching is used to match the um, particular characters. Now if you specify like I mean so what is the alternative so this is this is by using string match. Now if you say string exact then this needs to have it will not match these stars or all these square brackets etc. So now a uh, couple of more uh, things about regular expressions uh, one is this period that also matches any character the caret matches the start of the string dollar matches the end of the string and then the backslash x is a single character escape and then um, the square brackets essentially matches any set of characters tilde uh, is not and um, essentially uh, you can use uh, uh, dash to indicate the range. So these are some of the things that you can use within the square bracket. So if you do square bracket tilde a e, then it won't match the set a through e, which is range. Um, 
for the first character it, will, it can you can have anything like from f to z or any numbers or anything like that okay. in the parentheses and the regular expression matches the regular expression and here um, the star matches zero or more preceding the plus matches one or more of the preceding um, and then the question mark matches zero or one of uh, of the preceding and then um, we can use um, this uh, bar to divide alternatives. So here are some examples of uh, the regular expressions. So here A through Z lower case A to Z 0 to 9 and then underscore and then when it is plus it is 1 or more this is a valid tickle identifier so any kind of variable names are using this then um, here we say like tickle or TK with parenthesis and then using the bar T C L or K so that Matches to tickle or TK. So here another uh, in the in this regex command it is uh, regex T C L T K I mention T K W T so this will return 1 which is a match um, and then the W becomes T K and then the T gets K essentially. So if you recall the regex command actually it is uh, it gives basically the regex uh, regex followed by flags which are optional and the pattern here and then the string. And then the last two are the sub one and sub two, which is essentially um, here. Um, what are the sub strings from this match that gets added to it? Okay, so now let's look at the reg sub command. So that is so essentially like I mean, so here it matches the TK here. So the W becomes the TK, which is what is matched here, and then the T gets the substring K, which is where the match happened.
Now let us look at the reg sub command, reg sub command again has switches here in this case it is the no case is the switch um, and then the pattern which is essentially like here it is Perl and then followed by string and then we also have a sub spec essentially for this and a variable name. So here the no case Perl means match any case of Perl. So it returns one a match because it matches this Perl and then the mantra is the variable name that gets this I love tickle as the string because once it matches this Perl it replaces that Perl with tickle and then assigns that whole string to this uh, new variable mantra okay so now here is one example one quick question essentially like I mean more case where is a to z star escape question mark and then you have where is Bob and then we say basically like um, the sub spec is who's and then escape one and then put it in result. So how do we interpret this is essentially like I mean so this is going to match where is some name any name followed by question mark so here the string is where is Bob so it matches and so it returns one it's a perfect match. Now you look at the the parenthesis here so whatever is within the parenthesis will get replaced because this is termed as um, escape one so now basically the sub spec calls for who is and then replaces with uh, this here and then that string is assigned to result so the result gets who's Bob so the Bob is the one that got matched and then this is the, the parenthesis that's called as escape one and then that goes here so I may give you like some more exercises to work on uh, these concepts um, I think um, these are quite important ones um, for um, general understanding of uh, block style matching and plus regular expressions now uh, the format command essentially uh, this is something that uh, also like we talked about uh, in the this one um, this does string formatting so in how do we format a string essentially let me give the um, uh, the particular um, value um, and then um, essentially like I mean um, use we use it in substitution to that uh, that particular uh, thing so again here we say basically um, it is format and then this is what is known as the spec and then these are all the various values so this is value 1 and then you can have multiple values so every occurrence of this uh, various characters get uh, replaced with those values so here we say like percentage D that means that it is a signed integer and so 97 is an integer and then that gets replaced here you can have uh, unsigned integers um, we have um, O for unsigned octals X for unsigned hexadecimal C for mapping an integer to the ASCII character it represents um, S is for a string F is for floating point um, and then E is uh, using scientific notation and then the G is um, 
in uh, either um, the percentage F which is the floating point or the you know, scientific notation whichever is shorter use that. So essentially like I mean pretty much it boils down to the format is um, as most of the printf capabilities. Um, we can also use it to create uh, complex command strings. Now the next one is scan, scan is like uh, scan f in, uh, in C programming. So the scanf actually parses a string according to a format and assigns the values to the variables. So here let us assume that the string x has this uh, information which is SSN and then we say basically like some number. So when we say scan we scan this particular variable dollar x and then we say a format which is SSN um, hash is percentage D and then that is assigned to SSN. Now if you say like the social security number is dollar SSN this SSN basically it gets replaced with this number here from here and then uh, we can actually display that. So again for scan uh, command the syntax is scan string which is same as the dollar x here and then the format and then followed by variable. So here the format is percentage d of this whole thing SSN percentage d and then the variable is SSN. So, so that is how this assignment works. So now we come to another interesting topic um, which is the control structures. Um, control structures are needed for um, uh, controlling the um, various operations. Um, this basically gives the program the real structure or essentially the essence of the program is all in the control structure. We covered this uh, for Perl, uh, we talked about its data structures and then we went into more control structures, uh, even um, this is very similar. The control structures are like C in uh, Tickle. So if you know C it is very easy to write these control structures in particular you will understand it much better. They are just uh, commands that take tickle scripts as arguments again you, you should think again when we come to the tickle there is no grammar so everything is just a command and then the command will take other tickle scripts as arguments for it. Uh, for example, there is a list reversal where um, we set the list B to reverse of list A. So how do we do this? So here we declare a variable uh, called B and then we say um, we set the I to the L length of A minus 1. Can anyone tell me like I mean what, what does this uh, do? So L length actually gives the length of uh, the, the list essentially and then we need to subtract 1 from it because the first element is 0. So if you have n numbers the actual list indexes are 0 through n minus 1. So if there are n elements it is actually each one is index 0 through n minus 1 so we subtract that one from that thing and then now we just uh, go through this while loop which is one of the control structures 
and then we say dollar i greater than or greater than or equal to zero um, as long as the i is greater than zero do this which is l append b to l index a dollar i so again l index a dollar i returns the character or the, the list element which is of i from the list dollar a so now b becomes or b0 becomes a n and then we increment um, i plus 1 or oh, sorry um, so increment i with minus 1 which is actually decrementing i so here now the next element will be b1 because we do l of n will becomes a n minus 1 and so on so now you can see that actually like I mean it becomes a reverse and finally this is the end will be a 0 and that is when the program terminates. So it is a good program to do the, the reversal of uh, list um, but you can use this uh, so you can see that actually there is a compose structure here which is a while. So for doing the for controlling the commands uh, or controlling the structures um, or the control structure commands are essentially if for which break for each while eval continue and source the source command is uh, very commonly used essentially it is to source uh, a set of procedures or um, a new commands. So let us look at if else. So here we say the variable x, we set it to 2 and say that if it is less than 3, then put x is less than 3. If x is uh, otherwise, it just should as x greater than 3, x is 3 or more. So when you execute this program for x value of 2, now it will say this and it will exit, it will not execute this at all. Because it's already exists less than two, and then this is the uh, while example. We saw this list reversal essentially. Um, here, the b is e b c b a. After executing this program, this is the same thing that we saw in the previous one. Now we have for and for each. So for usually we say set i zero, then dollar i less than ten increment i and then puts dollar whatever essentially. And we can say like dollar i itself. And then for each actually uses uh, a list as its uh, main uh, arguments, and it uh, uses um, another variable in the middle. And this variable essentially is uh, just um, taken through each of the values inside the list. So for each color, red, green, blue, puts I like color. So it basically puts I like red, I like green, I like blue. So you three statements. Now there is another one which is the set A1. As a, a2 as b, a3, a26 as z. Assume that everything in between is also set somehow. Now, for each index, array names a puts a and then the index. So, there are two things basically, like I mean, uh, in an array. Uh, so these are what is called array commands essentially uh, array also like I mean we will go through these kind of commands uh, but in array as an data structure the command is array and then you have names and values so the names actually return the indexes 
all the indexes and then the values return what it is set to for example these things. So in this case essentially like I mean when you say index array names A and then puts A dollar index now we can see that this program will output A B and Z. So and then finally the this command called switch essentially this is very similar to the k statement uh, that uh, you may be familiar with. So here uh, we see another example um, so uh, we put these counts as 0 and then for each name we have uh, several names here a uh, list of names and then we say switch and based on the regex name so it is basically this name and then if it matches with Pete as the first character essentially then this is the first one and then this is the number and then uh, this is the main thing and then we increment Pete count and then if uh, it meets Bob or Robert then we will increment the Bob count and then default is um, increment other count. So now can you tell me like I mean what uh, this program will generate as the counts. So for the Pete count it counts 1, 2 so this will be 2 for the Bob Robert essentially it matches here 1. 2 and 3 so this is 3 and then finally like I mean the default um, is uh, increment other count the other count is actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it goes to the catch all anyway. So now you have 6 2 and Okay, so let's look at uh, some more rules on the control structures. So here um, we have um, x is three, and then we say if x is greater than two, and this is okay because it is evaluated only once. But if you say while x greater than two, and then you're setting x to three. This is just an infinite loop. Now, here we have a set A as um, red, blue, green, the list of red, blue, green. Now say like we say for each do i dollar a this is an okay syntax but if you say like I mean same thing with the red blue green then this is not okay okay this is essentially um, it basically it just errors out because it just gets confused as we know that uh, for each has just two arguments one and two. So once it sees like more number of uh, words it basically comes out and then um, for each array names A uh, this is a common idiom in tickle. So now let us look at one small example which is just a fun example for um, um, all the I mean so this is the control structure that we all familiar with and then very easy to understand too um, so we will look at this one and then we will look at some complicated examples in the next uh, lecture. So here 
first of all what is this what is this program do? this program identifies person as either a child a teen or adult how does it do so it asks for a question uh, how old are you and then it gets that uh, that value um, so it takes it from the standard in and assigns to this variable called age then it just examines that variable so if age is greater than or equal to 0 and um, if uh, age is less than or equal to 12 then it prints out as your child if age is greater than or equal to 13 and age less than 19 then it turns out that age you are a teen and then finally if age is greater than 19 then it says that you are an adult so a simple program so how can you write with say switch statement Number one switch statement and number two is um, what happens if the input age less than 0 and then how can you make it robust so let us discuss this in the next uh, lecture so I want you to go and work on this one essentially first of all modify this program into using switches this switch basically um, which is essentially which we learnt about it here right here and then the second thing is what happens in this program if you put age as less than 0 what is the program output try to find out and then the last question is how can you make it robust meaning how can you cover this condition if this errors out or it does not error out how can you cover this condition uh, and that also you can use the switch command essentially. Um, so um, let us uh, pick it up from this point uh, in the next uh, lecture uh, thank you all um, you, got a, you have a wonderful day thank you bye bye.